Today we're discussing how long your battery bank can last when trying to run off-grid or at night when there's no sun. Now these are ballpark calculations. So there's gonna be some inefficiencies, some energy losses from the transfer from DC to AC and in other minor areas. But for this example, we're not gonna worry about that. That's only a small percent, especially with the solar converter that I use. So we're only looking at five to 7% uh, losses in uh, inefficiencies. So I'm really not gonna take that into consideration because it would just overcomplicate this video. So let's just set that aside for now and not worry about it. So, but these are gonna give you a really good idea of how long your battery can last based on the different loads you'll be running. So if you're like me and you're looking to go off grid with solar, the question you're gonna ask yourself is, well, how big of a battery bank do I need to be able to accomplish that? And there's a lot of different answers online. And the most common one I see is as much as you can afford. Okay, well, yeah, I guess I can understand that being with the experience I have with it. But that answer doesn't give a beginner how long what they can afford is going to last. So a good simple way to calculate how big of a battery bank you need is to figure out how many kilowatt hours per day do you use in your house. Now the way to find that out is just take your electric bill that you get every month. It's in kilowatt hours anyways. You just take that uh, 30 day figure, whether it's 1,000, 1,200, and divide that by 30 and then multiply that by two. That's pretty much the easiest way. I agree that is the best way, but we'll get into detail on how to do that. So because my budget didn't allow me to buy a full 60 kilowatt hours, which is what I would have liked, I can only afford what you see behind me here, which is 30 kilowatt hours. And this battery bank right here is still about $11,000. So it is expensive, guys, definitely. But the great thing about using the inverter I use, which is the Solark 15K, is you can start smaller on the battery side and just scale up as your budget allows. And I'll leave a link. Uh, to the video at the end of this or a card at the end of this video showing that review I did on the inverter I have so you can check that out. Now let's get into how long my 30 kilowatt hour battery bank here can last. Uh, but before I do that actually I want to let you guys know that I do have a link in the description of this video to a diagram of my entire system from my inverter to the wiring to every part I use to links to every part that I bought at Home Depot and all of that and also a link to this battery bank and the charts you're going to see here in a second on how to calculate all this and how many watts everything uses in your house, I'm going to have that link in the description. It'll be a free download. You end up getting added to my email list, which every about three, four, five days, I send an email on tips that on things that I'm learning while I'm doing this that I wish other people would have told me about. So make sure you click on that link if you're interested and download that. All right. So there's two common ways to calculate the amount of energy available in your battery bank. One's amp hours and the other is kilowatt hours. Now, for this example, we're going to use kilowatt hours because that's the easiest, in my opinion, to understand. Um, so we'll stick with that. Um, so a simple fact to know, 1,000 watts is equal to one kilowatt. Guys, you have to remember that calculation. So lock that into your memory bank. Now, your electric bill shows how many kilowatts you use in a given month. So you're going to want to get your electric bill and take a look at it and kind of take a look at the average of all your months and figure out what that is. Um, so here is an example of an electric bill. And where that red arrow is on the right-hand side of the screen there, that's the total usage. That's your total kilowatt hours you used in a given month. So 1,022. We're going to use that as the example for this to help you figure out how long your battery bank is going to last. So take that 1,022 kilowatts per month, divide that by 30 days. That equals 34 kilowatts per day that you use. Okay? So you remember that. 34 kilowatts. Per day, multiply that too, because a lot of people say that's how big of a battery bank you're going to want to get. That's a 68 kilowatt hour battery bank. So that's what we would try to do with our budget and buy that. Now, I didn't have that amount um, to spend on that. So um, I only got roughly half that at 30 kilowatts. So what I have here is six EG4 lithium batteries. That's the exact batteries I have up there in the corner of the picture. Now, each battery is rated at 5.12 kilowatt hours. So you take basically the six batteries, multiply that by 5.12, you get 30.72 kilowatt hour battery bank. That's what I have. Now, how many watts is that? Now you multiply that 30.72 times 1,000 equals 30,720 watts. But wait a minute, that's not how many watts I have to, available to use because you don't want to discharge your lithium, lithium batteries below a 20% state of charge because you want them to last for you know, 10, 20 years. So Really, you only have 80% of that, which 80% of that uh, 30,000 watts I had available is 24,576 watts. That's how many watts I have available to use to discharge to my loads at night when there's no sun. 
Now, in an emergency, you can run your lithium batteries all the way to zero without doing long-term damage to them. Just don't make a habit of it, though. So here is a chart of just your common appliances or motors that you know your standard household runs. Um, so a whole home electric heater, yeah, those those just ten thousand to fifty thousand watts. You just can't do that, guys, on solar at night or on your battery bank at night. You just you got to get a mini split um, AC and heater, which I am actually going to do. Um, now, if you look at the standard electric dryer, that runs on 4,500 watts. Your standard electric range or stove, that's 4,500 watts. Everything in red there, you want to try and not run at night on your battery bank. I mean, I will run my four-ton residential air conditioner for maybe an hour or two and use six or seven kilowatt hours uh, just to keep the house cool at night. But I'm going to get a mini split, and I would recommend you guys do as well. And then you can see in the yellow here, there's just stuff that, uh, you know, they're moderate in yellow. So they run on 1500 watts. But a lot of these, like the microwave, it only runs for a minute or two. Your toaster, same thing, coffee maker. Now a space heater for those little tiny space heaters that run about 50 bucks. Those are about 1500 watts. So those can drain your batteries quick too. Um, again, more, just another chart here. And I'm going to have a link in the description where you can download this chart so you can see and know exactly what you can run with how big of a battery bank you're going to get. So go ahead and click on the link in the description. I'll also have some tips as well on how to, uh, uh, little tips that I use to make my batteries last longer. But as you can see everything in green here, you don't got to worry about running at night. I run this stuff all the time. Not a big deal. It's not a big enough draw, especially when you have, you know, 30 kilowatt hours or 24,000 watts available to use at night like I do. So, um, all right, moving on. So here's an example of like what I use at night. What do I run? About 10 recessed can lights in the living room, the kitchen. Um, those run at about 80 watts an hour total for eight of them. A 50 inch smart TV runs on about 150 watts an hour. Two refrigerators, charging cell phones, laptops, your internet modems running, um, your Solark 15K inverter. The solar inverter runs at about 90 watts. It's 595 running watts that I'm pulling from my battery bank per hour at night. What's that from like 7 p.m. to probably 11 p.m. or midnight. So now you take your available use or your available wattage you have in your battery, and you divide that by 595. So 24,576 watts is what we have available in our battery bank. Divide that by 595. That's 41 hours worth of, basically I could run this stuff for 41 hours on my battery bank with no problem. So that seems great, right? Well, absolutely it is. We're only running that. But now I'm going to show you an example of just throwing in an air conditioning. That's it. And watch how the numbers change. So I used the exact same example, but I added the four ton standard air conditioner at 3,500 watts. Now look, that went from 595 watts running an hour to 4,095. That brings our battery bank only lasting six hours. So you can see the difference. It went from 41 hours to six hours running that air conditioning. So. Guys, that's why I'm like, it's key to try to run those things only during the day when there's sun out or have a mini split. Um, you could run that without that big of an issue. Now, that's why I do want to double my battery bank size too, just to help out running those, uh, the heat and AC. But this should give you a good idea of how long um, your battery bank can last. So I know all that info I just gave out was like drinking from a fire hose and I had to go through it kind of quick. So watch that a few times. You'll get it though. After seeing it a few times, I'm confident you'll understand it without an issue. So guys, in my system, I maxed out my Solark 15K inverter with 19,200 watts of solar panels. So when the sun's out, I can easily reach the max that my inverter can handle, which is only which is 15,000 watts it can bring in. I can easily bring that in when the sun's out. And I can run every, not every large appliance, but two or three of my large appliances, I can run them without an issue when the sun's out. It's just when the sun is not out that you got to dial back those large uh, energy draw items like your air conditioning, um, your oven, if you're using an electric oven, or your electric hot water heater, um, or well pumps, things like that. That's what you got to be careful. So again, if you'd like a copy of all this information, there'll be a link in the description below where you can download those charts and make sure you subscribe to this channel, guys. Thanks a lot.